Yo, yo, what's up? It's Day Day here, and today I'm going to bring you 10 tips and tricks to help you step up your game in Halo Infinite and go from playing like a noob to playing like a pro. Coming in at number 10 is using the AI to scan the environment. So the quick way of doing this is if you're on controller, you press down, and if you're on a keyboard, you press Z, as in Zulu. Now again, this is with default controls, so if you've messed with them or you changed your key binding to something different, you're going to need to go into a private match and figure out which one it is. But scanning, what it does is it scans the entire environment to let you know of like what guns, vehicles, etc. is in the area. It doesn't, however, let you know where the enemies are or show you enemies on the map, which is a good thing because that would be overpowered. But if you know what guns people tend to go for or where they tend to flow on the map itself or what vehicles they go for, it can give you a good idea of where the enemy is. This will also allow you to have better communication with your teammates if they don't know where a certain power weapon is or they don't know exactly like where they might be or whatever. You can use this to help uh, identify where a gun could be or what path they should be able to take. Coming in at number nine is gonna be strafing while aiming. Now what I mean by this is if you're on keyboard, uh, it's gonna be A and D, or if you're on controller, it's gonna be using your left stick. So this is also known as left stick aiming. And it's simply just going from side to side, AKA strafing, in order to make yourself a harder target to hit. Most players, whenever you engage in them, they're just going to be very linear with their fighting. They're only going to continue to run straight at you instead of making themselves a harder target. So if you can learn how to incorporate that with your gunfights, it's going to make you a lot better. And you can do this by going into practice mode, like I referred to in my last video, finding a wall or playing against bots and learning how to keep your aim centered onto the target while you could constantly keep moving left and right. Coming in at number eight movement while sliding to your advantage. So this is also gonna stack right on top of a strafing. If you can learn how to incorporate your slides uh, while you are engaging other people, it's going to make yourself even that much harder to hit. So if you're finding yourself running straight at an enemy and they start shooting, you can slide. That's gonna bring your profile a little bit lower. That's gonna throw them off target while you're still on target. So this way you can make your next move. Maybe you want to jump, you come out of a slide into a bunny hop. So this way you can start your strafing left and right. Or maybe you come out of your slide and you go straight into another slide or you come out of your slide into a bunny hop. I mean, there's endless possibilities with movement here. Learning how to master strafing, sliding, bunny hopping is going to take your gameplay to a whole nother level. Coming in at number seven, this is how to begin in close fights. Now, most people may not know this, but plasma weapons tear down your shields a lot faster. But when the shield is gone, bullets will actually finish off the kill a lot faster than continuing to use the plasma weapon. So a great idea is to bring both a plasma weapon and a bullet weapon and use them in conjunction with each other in order to make best of the, uh, the engagement itself. So you use any kind of plasma weapon to bring down their shield, immediately switch my recommendation like in my last video, which I'll be linking at the end of this video, your pistol, that's like my favorite weapon to use, and you finish off the kill that way. Coming in at number six, understanding your radar. This is kind of like in Warzone or any other first person shooter where you have a mini map. Your radar is your mini map. And it may not show you information when someone is shooting or, or show the information like a mini map does, or you may not think that, but it actually does. Number five, understanding the radar. Make sure that whenever you go into an engagement or before you get into an engagement, you're utilizing your radar. Kind of like you would do in Battlefield or within uh, Warzone, you would m utilize your minimap. The radar is your minimap. It's gonna tell you where someone is when you get within a certain proximity or if they have already started engaging someone, you're gonna see them a lot further than what you would on the radar if they weren't engaging someone. So you can formulate a plan to flank them in a better position. Coming in number four is utilizing nades to your advantage. Most people, I believe, do not utilize the grenades. And the crazy thing is, you will constantly be refilling your grenades. Every time you kill someone, you're picking up grenades. Why are you picking up their grenades? Because they didn't utilize them. You're constantly finding them scattered all throughout the map, each and every map that you play. So you can use grenades in multiple different ways. If you know the enemy is gonna be going left, and you want them to go right, throw a grenade to the left. It's gonna force them to go right, or they're gonna take massive damage and possibly even die. 
If you want to cut off a choke point, again, you can utilize a grenade. If you're taking a lot of damage, you need to break away from the gunfight, aim the grenade down at your feet. If it's just a regular grenade, so this way it bounced away from you. Or if it's a plasma grenade, just simply throw it a little bit further in front of you as you make your escape, and it's going to have to stop before they can even continue to engage, allowing you to have a little bit more opportunity to have your shield regenerate and to formulate a new plan. So make sure you're taking advantage of the grenades because I promise you within a matter of seconds after using them, they will already be refilled. Number three, rolling in pairs if and when it's possible. Now, this is obviously is to team-based matches. If you're playing solo, it, it doesn't really matter. But if you're running with a team, especially with a friend, you don't have to necessarily be side by side, but you'd be rolling together. So this way your flank and their flank can be covered, or your six and their six can be covered. And when you run into an engagement, if you start taking more damage than what was intended, especially if there is more than one person, you can simply just tag them in and you can eliminate them. And every time you eliminate somebody, it's gonna be a little bit before they get back in the match, allowing you to focus more on the objective. Next tip is pay attention to the kill feed to see who is dead and who is up. This is especially important when trying to make a move for an objective such as capture the flag and you know how long that they're going to be down. Knowing where they're going to respond, so again this goes back into my previous video where I stated you should learn the map completely, that's learning where the responds are, will allow you to formulate a path of least resistance so this way you can capture the flag or whatever the objective is knowing where they're going to respond and how much time you have. Make sure you're running the correct sensitivity is going to be the next tip. And in the previous video, I break it down, what range you stay in, so on and so forth. So I'll be linking that again at the end of this video. But if you're running too high of a sensitivity or too low of a sensitivity, you're not going to be able to either get on target and take down an enemy, or you're going to constantly be going past the target and still not be able to get on target to take down an enemy. So make sure you're running the correct sensitivity, something that's not way too high, so you can never actually get onto the enemy and you keep going past them, or something that's not way too low and you're not able to get on track because you're dead before you ever get your crosshairs there. And the final tip is playing on a grip method that allows you to not have to take your thumb off the aim. This is specifically for controller players because obviously when you're playing keyboard and mouse, you don't have to worry about it. All you do is hit the space bar to jump. But if you have like a scuff controller or an Elite Series X controller, or Elite Series 2 controller like I have, you have the paddles on the back, so it allows you to do that. Uh, if you don't have either one of those controllers or an off-brand version that has paddles on the back, then another thing you could do is by playing claw. And this is where you use your index finger to hit the uh, jump button itself. Um, and you'll need to actually remap your controller in order to do that at least more comfortable and that's like I think bumper jumper but there's tons of videos that break that down I used to play that way I found I got a lot of cramps so I would recommend if possible getting a controller that has paddles on the back so this way you can continue to do your movements such as jumping without having to take your thumb off of the aiming stick because that one tip is going to bring you to a whole another level Yo, if you enjoyed the video, I asked you please hit the like button. It really does help out a lot. Also, check out either the video I just uploaded yesterday or the shorts playlist. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace and love.